Hello, welcome to Tala Talks NICU. I'm Dr. Tala and normally on this channel, we break down neonatal concepts to make them really easy for you to understand. Today, we're gonna to do something a little bit different though, and that is that I'm going to tell you about this absolutely amazing book that I just read, which I really think that anybody that works in the NICU or has babies in the NICU should really read. So to be fair, this book was published in 2020, and I ordered it about a year ago, and it's been sitting on my bedside table since then. So I don't know about you all, but I have like 50 books on my bedside table that are about to be read, to be read books, TBR. But when I finally started it, I pretty much finished it in about six or seven hours. And I honestly cannot recommend it enough. Before we go over all the different questions that the book covers and all the like interesting history of neonatology, let me tell you what the book is. It is called An Intimate History of Premature Birth and it's written by Sarah D. Gregorio. Interestingly, I think the hardback version was actually called Early and then Colon, An Intimate History of Premature Birth. And I also really love this like subheading and what it teaches us about being human. And that's really emphasized in the book. So this book really covers a lot of the difficult and like deeply ethical questions that we grapple with in the unit. Questions like, should we be resuscitating 22 weekers? And if we do resuscitate infants at lower gestational ages, does it affect abortion laws? And when we're trying to decide whether an infant should go through the discomfort of being in the NICU, we often conclude that it's worth it if the infant ends up having a reasonably good quality of life. So what is considered a good quality of life? I didn't really want to answer this question now, but I just love what she wrote so much. And that is the ability to love and to be loved should be enough of a good quality of life. How can we even know about what the important quality of life measurements are unless we actually ask ex preterm infants? And what actually constitutes suffering in the unit? Does growing on a ventilator count as suffering? When do we even stop life support or redirect to comfort care? How do we continue with our days when we redirect to comfort care or allow natural death? What should the balance in the NICU be between paternalism and autonomy? Or another way of saying that is how much should we be making decisions for the parents and the patients rather than the parents making the decisions themselves? How do we present information to parents so that they can make informed decisions? How much should the whole legal aspect or department be involved? Yes, it's lovely being able to say, we have to do this, we have to stop now, we can't resuscitate this baby, but also we all have to realize that every single baby is different. Why do black mothers in America have such a high rate of prematurity? And this chapter was so interesting to me. Di Gregorio discusses that this is not a genetic issue, but rather the constant stress of racism and other stresses in these mothers' lives. So in this book, she actually covers a lot of the answers to these questions, or rather, she kind of argues both sides of the argument. So just brings up really, really good points that we should always be considering when we're in the NICU. Di Gregorio herself had a little 28 weeker that spent some time in the NICU who's doing fantastically now. So she comes at this book with her own knowledge and sensitivities, as well as with the logical, curious mind of an investigative journalist who's done a bunch of research. In addition to covering all these questions, she also does a deep dive into all the technology that and its history that has made the NICU possible. So there's all the fascinating history, and I'm sure a lot of you have kind of heard about this before, about the earliest incubators and how little premature babies were basically put in kind of homemade incubators at fairs. So they were basically sideshows next to rides and next to people swallowing fire and stuff. This is how the first incubator started. She also goes into the history of the usage of positive pressure ventilation in the NICU and basically the two amazing pioneering female neonatologists that kind of got PPV started in the NICU. And you've all heard this story about JFK's son who tragically died from RDS because he was born a few weeks early. So she talks about what happened there and how he ended up dying in a hyperbaric chamber. They put um, the little baby into a hyperbaric chamber, hoping to kind of get more oxygen into his poor little body. So she also talks about how that kind of initiated all the surfactant research and how that got a surfactant into the NICU. 
I learned a lot about the history. It filled in a lot of gaps for me. And I don't know if this is a good idea or not, but I really do want to read the last few lines of the book because I feel like it really sums up prematurity in such beautiful words. Um, as an aside, the last couple of times I read this out aloud, I was reading it to my husband. I started crying, so hopefully I'll be more professional than that. I have to wear reading glasses. Okay. Premature, prematurity teaches us, forces us, to live with unanswerable questions, to lean into the mysteries. It is living with doubt and fear and grief and nevertheless moving forward because we must in our imperfect human ways. Gestation is a marvel, no matter how it is accomplished. But gestation isn't the real magic. Love is the magic. Love is the only magic. I made it. So we've put the link below. I really can't recommend it enough. And just before I finish, I just want to add that Sarah De Gregorio has actually written another book on nursing called Taking Care. And it has received absolutely amazing reviews. I've just ordered it. So if you're at all interested, I can review that book as well. Thank you so much for being here. Please like this video if you've reached this far and subscribe if you're interested in neonatal content. Thank you so much for being here.